Wonder Woman issue three, George Perez and Len Wein. Uh, obviously, again, Perez being the artist and co-writer. Uh, so, um, as opposed to my usual format of saying the names. So, yeah, this continues kind of where we expect. Although, I don't know if I was expecting Wonder Woman to just drop Steve off at a hospital, uh, off panel, because we start the issue and she's with Hermes and she's been shown other things. Like, Steve's a separate and he's on his own and that plot is kind of its own subplot throughout the issue. Um, yeah, she's like, ah, I don't care about this chump. I think what got me in this issue is how much uh, I, can't, I forget which one it is, but because because Phobos and Demos are both doing different things. Because what ones like one? This is funny because I just watched the Omen three, and there's a scene in the Omen three where Damien, who's an adult in the, the third one, is like talking to all the disciples of Hell. It's all these random people who who are you know secretly doing his bidding, and that's kind of what happens in this with one of them. But they're talking to all these people who have sworn to Ares, so uh, they're all there listening mm-hmm. to him. But the other one was giving me some serious Power Rangers vibes. And not just because we're talking about Power Rangers later in the episode, but because uh, he essentially like, puts, he gets like a little like doll thing, it's getting into like a furnace or like a magical furnace. And I think part of it, them, them watching through the portal yeah. as well adds to that effect. But so, I mean, obviously then it turns out to be like uh, another daughter of Ares or whatever by the end of the end of this year. Uh, but I just, I was getting those vibes from it. It was really cracking me up. I was getting Power Rangers vibes. Um, so yeah, so there's a whole thing. So what, one of the people who are working for the villains, one of these, like, a loyal people, is this, a uh, you know, soldier who, and I say soldier, he's, he's, he must be fairly high ranking, but he, he says, um, no, no, no one's seen Steve, he's still under suspicion for everything that's happened, so they won't let uh, or the other generals see him. Uh, but of course he then tries to kill Steve, uh, a little bit later on, and Steve kind of has to fight his way out. Um, but what's funny is, though, is it's actually the nurse who tries to kill him. And I got a good chuckle out of Steve just because, I mean, when he said what he saw, I, like, I look back at the pals and went, oh, yeah, you can kind of see she's like, you know, she's putting some air into the syringe. She's, she's kind of setting him up to die. But I didn't really quite get exactly what she was doing in the first read through. So when he just like punched her randomly, I was like, oh, what's going on, Steve? Why are you punching a nurse? <laughs> Yeah, it does very clearly show it's an empty vial yeah. that she's just taking air out of into the syringe. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's such a sort of, and it's not even because the art's like, I mean, because the art's very good for a start, but it's not even just like, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that more modern art would show this better. It's more just that it's such a minutia thing that I don't know if any comic art can successfully get this across without maybe, I don't know, some other sign or some aid. I think. I get where you're coming from, because there's no context to, to compare it against a full bottle. Yeah. So we don't know what a full bottle with something in it looks like. And this, obviously, it's not it's still not completely clear and see-through. It's it's curvature, so it's got reflection, and it's got her fingers on it. And, and you can see, I think, what does give it away is you can see her finger on the other side. But you could also just assume there's a relatively clear liquid in there, uh, if, if you didn't know better. Yeah. Because uh, that scene happens right after we see... Uh, uh... Phoebos or Demos uh, talking to all the... F- and we see a nurse and a general in the crowd. So it kind of sets it up in the previous page. That one's uh, Demos. That's one of these Demos, yes. Uh, yeah. So it's a fun time. And then the general starts fighting Steve as well. So we have this action scene in the hospital where Steve ends up kind of going on the run. Um, and the the general or corporal or, or colonel, whatever the rank that the dude is, Whatever one tried to kill Steve, the other one then shoots him in the back it's like, because he failed, kind of thing. Uh, because they have, cause he, cause he's like, oh, Steve's trying to escape, you have to cover things up, and he just gets shot in the back. He was a sergeant. He was a sergeant. So the one I didn't say, the great. Uh, <laughs> I thought I'd cover my bases. Uh, <laughs> so, and Steve, of course, goes to speak to, uh, speak to Air, um, to sort of try and clear things up and see what see what they can do. Uh, he does say he has vague memories of like flying with a woman, uh, in the sky, but he doesn't know for sure. Like it's all kind of hazy, uh, which kind of makes sense. I think when you just wake up in the hospital as well, it's reasonable to assume that maybe you don't trust the weird visions in your mind like that. Yeah. Plus, you know, he he had just like been ejected from like a plane when he was saved or whatever. So it's not like. To, to think that maybe he banged his head and is maybe imagining some things is not necessarily an absurd idea for him, I don't think, at this particular point. Not at all. Uh, one of women's plot on the other side of things, though, is that she is taken to a librarian who is going to help her uh, basically learn about the world. You know, Hermes drops her off here. 
um, and gives her the uh, the amulet thing, the MacGuffin from his from his staff. And this woman luckily speaks some Greek. Um, it doesn't quite match what Diana is saying. She she notes that it's like half Greek, half kind of to her gibberish. But yeah, the, the their language evolved in its own way that started as Greek, yeah. but obviously kind of became its own. Which makes sense. Variation. Yeah, as your thoughts went into that, which is nice. That's that's how languages evolve. But yeah. of course, Diana starts to learn how to speak English throughout the the, the, the issue. And this woman takes her home uh, to live with her and her, her daughter. Um, and in fact, the, the daughter had a line at one point that really cracked me up, where she's she goes on the phone to her boyfriend. It's after realizing that this 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 woman in this weird costume is going to stay with them. And she's, she, she goes up to the room and calls her boyfriend on the phone and says, no, don't come up for a study date. And there's a little thought bubble with her just saying to herself, I don't want him seeing that stone cold fox. <laughs> she's, she's worried that her boyfriend's... Gr- yeah, because, yes, this, this, this woman who... I mean, I don't know how old but the room's about to be here. I guess she's still maybe quite young, so maybe she would be around their age. I, I would say she looks youthful uh, at most early 20s. Yeah, but, yes... But I, I guess what I like about it is that it's obviously a silly thought coming from a teenage girl. Like, you know, why you know, does, does she really think that this this random woman who can't speak English is going to turn around and actually go for her boyfriend? Um, but yeah, it was just funny. And the art was good in that panel as well because the look of worry in her face. As she, and she's done that thing where she's sort of holding the phone at the bottom as well. Like she's in hushed tones and she's like, yes, don't yeah. come over. It's, it's as if she's yeah. making sure he can't hear how sexy this woman is in the house. Like, no, you must not hear the sexiness. I must, I must hold it close. Yeah, I, I, every day because it starts. But she's just like lying on a bed uh, with a phone, like really casual. Mm-hmm. And she's not even holding it with a hand. She's got a book or something. But when it gets to this part, it, that's when you know she, she's right. She almost sits up a bit, and you know that's when she grabs the phone and you know, you know brings the hand in. So you you definitely get a a sense of it. You know, shifting through the conversation. Yeah. Uh, so Phoebus, the statue he created, he he posted it <laughs> in the mail to this woman because he's trying to sabotage Diana, obviously. A little less Power Rangers. Yes, yeah, a little less Power Rangers. Uh, but then his eyes open, of course, once it's on the mantle, uh, and the teenage daughter's like asleep on the couch, and we hear a scream. Diana and the mother, like you know, run downstairs to see what's going on, and we see uh her sort of reformed into her actual form, which is a uh, DK is what she's called. Uh, and she's got this long purple, maybe a bit more lavender hair, uh, very, very sort of witch-like though and scraggy, big sort of red demonic eyes, very scrawny, you know. I, I like that she was wearing because that makes sense for decay because... Decaying. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, like you it's it's there. You, you wouldn't know. expect someone who builds their whole identity around the word decay to decay to be like fat. <laughs> exactly. It, it's it's just visually, uh, unless it's some sort of mobster nickname, in which yes. case it makes perfect sense. But uh, you know, the the idea here being, you know, okay, you know, visually it completely lines up with the name. Uh, makes it fits. Yes. Um, I think I, I I implied earlier. I remember there being the daughter of someone. She's actually the daughter of Medusa. I think I said I said I just threw out the word Aries earlier. <laughs> but uh, now I'm on the page. It's Medusa. Uh, she says it. Is that Medusa specifically? Yeah. Uh, as my mother, the Medusa turned men to stone. Okay. So I shall render them to dust. Because I know uh, earlier in the issue when uh, he was gathering the, the you know the, the stuff for this statue, mm. he went to you know the, the Gorgon's heart. I think it said. Mm. Um, but uh, you know at that point I was like, well there are three gorgons uh so i mean didn't have to be medusa but uh you know, it says at the end here so it makes yeah. sense uh the, the issue ends with the cliffhanger of her dropping the house on top of them basically so that's that's where we end the the whole thing uh but obviously i mean the art's still fantastic the the you know, decay looks great uh, especially the, the close-ups in her face as well where she's got like i guess red smoke coming out of her mouth as she speaks uh yeah, it's coming out of her hands as well at one point. Yeah. yeah like, uh, it's great. I, I really love how, you know, Diana's in like a semi casual clothing here. Like, she's still got a full outfit on, but she's got like a, Wait, like a jacket over the top. You say semi casual. She's, she's got like a, basically a lumberjack shirt on top, just casually sort of thrown on top of her outfit. <laughs> yeah, but it gives it like this completely different feel, doesn't it? <laughs> um, 
it's one item of clothing, so I'm not going to say it's semi kit. I'm going to say it's slightly covering her up, and maybe warming her up a little bit. I, I think it becomes semi casual because it's it's no longer the formal wear mm. of just the suit. It's there. There is an item of casual clothing there, so it becomes semi. That's that's the rules. I don't make them. Uh huh. Very good. Uh, what are you rating Wonder Woman issue three? Uh, I'm gonna rate eight point five. Another great issue. Uh, yeah, it's hard to fault to be honest. It's done a it's done a really good job of like building up both Steve's sort of like conspiracy side of the story. Uh, I kind of like how the two villains we've got, Phoebus and Demos here. I kind of like how. I, almost indirectly, they're kind of split between Steve and Diana because one is like sending henchmen to kill Steve, and the other one's sending a monster. If well, the monster. It's you know for Diana. Yeah, no, I get it. Like the idea is they've kind of between them almost divvied up the problems. Yeah. Like, you deal with one, I'll deal with the other. Yeah, just kind of naturally. Like, I'm I'm sure that won't last long, and it'll end up crossing over. Probably once Steve and Diana themselves start I'll crossing over. Probably get in each other's way. Yeah. So it's neat. Uh. So, yeah, Wonder Woman's going to get to fight something next issue, which is kind of a first, actually, for the most part in this. So that's actually kind of cool. Mm. We'll see how that plays. Um, so my rating, though, which is what I was building up to, uh, I'll also go with 8.5. So there you go.